the name has changed, but the conversations remain the same. It's now a woman's perspective. The Daughters of Sheba Foundation will continue its tradition. Nothing will take us off track from the woman's perspective. Join us each month. So I turned 60 this year. Oh, yeah. I know, I know. In the eyes of society, I'm old, washed up, over the hill. But I'm here to tell you, I'm happier, I'm better at my job, and I'm more creative than I've been since I was a child. For the last 25 years, I've run an arts organization for people with disabilities. I've taught blind people how to take photographs, deaf people how to dance, and most recently started teaching people with Alzheimer's and dementia how to do graffiti. I spent a lot of time in elementary schools and nursing homes. If I go into an elementary school and I ask, how many of you feel you are creative? Every hand in the room will go up. Piles of paperwork and no time for strategic HR? Let Bob clear up your to-do list. Say hi. And you know what? They're right. A study by NASA indicated that 98% of five-year-olds will test at the creative genius level. If you do the same test again for 10-year-olds, the percentage drops to around 30. And if you do it again when children are 15, the percentage is right around 13. So, I go into a corporate setting and I ask the same question. How many of you feel you are creative? And very few hands in the room will go up. And you know what? They too are right. If you administer the same NASA test to adults, less than 2% of us will test at the creative genius level. So I started to ask myself, what happened? How do we go from 98% to 2%? And I think I know. I think very early on in our development, we all start confusing creativity with artistry. They're two very different things. And what I'd like to do tonight is talk to you about rediscovering the creative genius you were when you were five. What we want to do tonight is to sh share with you what creativity means to us here at the Daughters of Shiva Foundation, but more importantly, what creativity means to our guest. We have a very special guest tonight. So before I introduce her to you, I just want to say thank you for joining us. My name is Claudette Estherine Campbell, and I am the chairperson and president of the Daughters of Shiva Foundation. The Daughters of Shiva Foundation is a Canadian registered nonprofit organization which centers its work on women and their families. We uh, work with women wherever in the world they might be in terms of inspiration, education, and engaging women uh, because we feel that um, while there 
there is lots of talk about women empowerment, um, very few organizations are actually doing the work. And um, by doing the work, we don't necessarily mean giving women money, but giving women the psychological, the mental and the spiritual tools to change, transform their lives. This year, our theme is I am woman, creative, innovative and resilient. And so this month, every month we have a sub theme and this month we are focusing on daring to dream. There is no bigger dreamer than our guest tonight. She has been on with us before in a different conversation, a conversation that had more to do with the body rather than dreaming. We, she joined a panel that we were talking about sex and sexuality and, and women not being afraid of, of their own sexuality. So join me in welcoming our guest tonight. I will bring her on. Uh, she is best-selling author and poet Marlena Zen Johns. Hi, how are you again? <laughs> Hi, I'm, I'm doing fine. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm wonderful. I'm wonderful. As I, as as we spoke before, I told you I'm on a, I'm on a sabbatical, um, let us call it, and um, so I'm resting, recuperating, rejuvenating, and um, stepping into my own creativity. <laughs> so it's it's opportune that we're having this conversation tonight. First, let me apologize. We I was supposed to be joined by my two co, well, I have three co-directors here at the Daughters of Sheba Foundation. And um, one of them is very silent, who happens to be my daughter. Um, the other two, Gloria and Clara, were supposed to be joining me tonight. This program is, before used to be called a woman's prerogative. We decided to change the name and to a woman's perspective and to take more control of, of the presentation from a woman's perspective by having the directors of the foundation um, participate in these conversations with guests. Um, however, Gloria just returned from London, England, where she has been for several months um, visiting. And um, Gloria, in fact, I know she don't mind my saying this, Gloria is a recent survivor of um, breast cancer surgery. And um, so, she was the one who came up with the theme for this year, um, creativity and resilience, because it was su it's such a personal journey for her right now. Clara, I'm told, is mm. running a few minutes late, um, mm. and um, she will be joining us shortly, I hope. But in the meanwhile, then you and I will have our conversation. Um, as, <laughs> um, like I said, we're, our perspective tonight is about creativity and how and how do how do we reclaim our creativity? And I know that you do a lot of work um, in terms of one's creativity, reclaiming your life after the breakup of relationships and so forth. So we can tackle it from from that perspective. But before I go there. I have to do my favorite thing. I think I'm not sure if I did it with you when um, we spoke the last time. Um, okay. just, can you just share with, with with my audience and your friends who have joined us? They would know. And um, where not which? Don't tell me your street address. But <laughs> what state are you in the United States? I'm in Texas. You're in Texas. Okay. And have you lived there all of your life, or are you a recent migrant to Texas? Meaning from some other state? I know you are. U.S. born? I was born in Baton Rouge. I came to Texas when um, I was two, but I kind of went back and forth between my parents in Texas and my grandparents in Louisiana. And so I grew up in both places. So I spent, um, I guess you could say, half my childhood in both places. So Both places has, have good food. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Very true. Which, which leads me to my next question. Um, What's your favorite food on a Sunday afternoon? It really depends on my mood. Um, my favorite food used to be bread, but uh, I loved all kinds of different breads, especially artesian breads. But I've gotten into a, a, a meal delivery service called Every Plate. So they okay. send me four different menus every week. And so I found that a lot of things that I've never even heard of have become my favorite dishes. Oh, I'm okay. Cooking from scratch four times a week now. And and I'm just loving all the different flavors. So I couldn't tell you right now what my favorite food is because I've been <laughs> You're exploring so many. I'm exploring. Yeah. I'm exploring so many different uh, types of food right now. Great. 
Okay, so for those of you who don't know, um, like I said, Zen is a, a, a best-selling author. She has uh, not one, but five books. She's also a poet and a playwright. Um, we will talk a little bit about her books shortly, but um, in, in the bio, um, Zen is described as living an adventurous life of raising twins, also teaching and touching lives through her poetry, and um, she is a recipient, an honoree of the Congressional Award. What, what was that awarded to you um, for? Well, um, when I started my business, my, my first business was poetry, comedy, and music shows. And because people will come out for entertainment, you get a chance to partner with a lot of different causes, at least I did. Um, you know, so we would do like coat drives and you know, school supply drives, blanket drives. We did a lot of mental health work. So it was actually for the activism I was doing in the community around um, homelessness, domestic violence, um, dealing with just all kinds of issues and needs. And so um, we had kind of really spent like a whole summer just pouring ourselves into doing show after show after show after show that was hitting these different needs and getting people to come out for things like trying to get their records expunged or trying to get them into mental health counseling and things like that. And just one of the, uh, Sheila Jackson Lee, who's one of our Congress people, she had sent some people out to, to watch what we were doing. And then she just showed up with congressional awards. We didn't even know we were getting awarded any of this. It was like out of the blue. So nobody told us. So it was a very big and wonderful surprise. You know, everyone's crying <laughs> who's on wow. stage, you know, because you just you're doing things because you see the need but to be um awarded something nice. like that is is very it's it's very impactful and very humbling mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so um your you, so you said you've lived a life of activism in, in your adult life you know and um we have spoken before in a previous program about your sex life <laughs> and your dating life so we don't need to go there but um what what i want to discuss with you tonight and let me just say hi to a few people who, on my side who who have uh, joined us hi colleen how are you good evening thanks as always for for joining us hi corella good evening as always thank you for joining us. I don't, I don't know if any of your friends have joined on your side. Um, they haven't commented, so I, I can't see them um, Zen. So like I said tonight, um, our conversation is about creativity and unleashing your creativity and um, using it to, 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 to empower yourself. Um, I, uh, I, as an, as a, what you have written five, is it five books? It's five. Right. So I have, um, I want you to tell me, uh, just so that we can set the stage so people understand that, hey, this is not, uh, we're not just saying it, she's actually quite a creative woman, <laughs> woman, at least um, in terms of literature. literature. Um, so I think I'm showing on the screen here, let me go back. Yes, I'm showing one of your books. Um, it is called Plenty of Guppies and Other Dating Misadventures, Lust, Loss, and Lessons of Love from 101 Dates, a memoir told in poetry and prose. I remember our last conversation where you did mention um, after the breakup of your marriage, I believe it was in a relationship after your marriage, that you counted that you did go on 101 dates. Um, Clara has just joined us. Um, hi, Clara. Thanks for being here, albeit late. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, uh, Clara, this is Zen, Zen Clara. Clara is a uh, director of the Daughters of Shiva Foundation. She is our secretary. Thanks for joining me. Um, so, yeah, so Zen, you did write this book um, after 101 dates. And um, so this is this conversation is not about the book necessarily, but why did you feel a need to to count how many dates you went on <laughs> uh well actually there was 147 when i wrote the book but it was okay so we have to kind of go back um, uh -huh. because in fifth grade i had a teacher who made us journal every class 
And I started journaling in fifth grade. And I stopped at different points in my life, but I always came back to journaling because it was such a stress relief for me and it helped me put my life in perspective. It also helped me feel like I had some control over the things that were happening in my life because I could really put it on paper and look at it with some distance and objectivity. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it, it, it helped me process and journaling is known to do that through research. So I had been journaling the entire time I was going on these days and I actually never meant to really write this book, but um, circumstances and people asking about where's my poetry book kind of led to me writing the book. So I had been chronicling my life and then those chronicles led to me turning it into a memoir. Okay, so in Jamaica, I, Clara can correct me if I am, my memory is not serving me correctly. Um, in Jamaica, we call a fish, there's a particular little fish that we call a guppy, right, Clara? You don't know guppy fish? It's like a ticky ticky fish that's that in the river? No, it's not guppy, they're called? Oh, okay. What's a guppy for you? <laughs> what's for you? What's a guppy for you, um, Zen? To me, a guppy is a fish that you would throw back. It's yeah. it's undeveloped, it's immature. It's I not something that you would want to catch and keep. So um, even though some of the guys I ended up in relationships with at the end of the book, well, I don't want to give it away, but basically it's about how even though in a sense I threw the fish back, every one of them taught me something. Every one of them added to my life in some way. I saw things about myself. I saw things about life, about men, about relationships. So even the things that you throw back that you don't keep, you know, you can learn from. So that's one of the themes of the book is trying to take from all of the different experiences you have and the people that come into your life. What are they there to teach you? What can okay. you learn? So um, what, tell, tell us that I, I don't know if I'll be able to find it, but tell us the title of the other books that you have. Um, if you're if you're on Amazon, you can click on Zenashe, the the name at the top. But the other book, I have a sequel to the. What's the name of it? I can click on where? You can click on my my name, Zenashe. It should be highlighted. If you click on my name, uh, it should take oh, you to there we all go. of the books okay. right there. Okay. So, you, so um, you did a children's book as well. I'm seeing right. here. Yeah, that book is about um, a lot of us grow up feeling like we have to earn love, like we're not good enough, we're not enough. And that goes even into our adulthood. And some of us, it comes from being either abandoned or neglected as a child or parentified. Like we have to do a lot of parental roles or adult roles as a child. Mm -hmm. So we don't get that love and nurturing. Mm -hmm. So this book is really about whether it's sunshiny, whether it's day, night, you know, whatever is going on, you still have internal worth. You were born with it. It can't be taken away from you. So it's actually an illustrated poem and it's got all kinds of different looking people. So it's a multicultural book. So you could see yourself no matter what shade you are, no matter what age you are, you know, so it's got representation of different um, ethnicities and things like that. Okay. Uh, book. So there is another one mm -hmm. called... Um, Zenerg uh, Zenergize your life. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Let's 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 do this one last. I want to because I think that one goes right into um, our main topic tonight. So let's do this one um, next. The ultimate me plan. Oh, maybe this one is. <laughs> well, so this have... one is. Um, this is a personal and a professional planner. It's undated, so there's agenda pages, calendar pages. There's a reflection page for each week. There's a journaling page for each month, and it actually has things like where to put like a dream record, writing your own affirmations, you know, what are you trying to manifest into your life? So there's a lot of places for you to brainstorm about who you want to become, the ultimate me that you can become, you know, so there's a lot of reflection pages as well. So it's got a lot of different food for thought in there. Okay. Oh, sorry about that. I had to, I was hearing. <laughs> um, okay. So it, 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 it actually leads well into to what we're talking about tonight, but let's just go to the next, next book um, that you have here. Um, it's called Zenergize Your Life. Um, tell us about this one and 
in your opinion, how does, um, it says here in the description, embrace wellness with a unique, customizable guided journal. But the embrace wellness, and that's what we're talking about. We are big here on the whole question of self-care. We're also big on the whole thing of visualization, transformation, using imagery and, and, and all of that. And we're actually next week having a private session with a, a previous guest that we have for some members of the organization to, to, to go through that process, at least to learn how to, to go through the process. Now, I want you to tell me about the book, but I would like you to tie it into our conversation unless Clara also has something to request of you with that. How does a woman um, do, do this with her life and, and um, where she's at now? And I'm thinking a lot more about a woman who is middle-aged, you know, 35 plus, because that's our audience, um, a 35 plus woman, how can she energize her life? Well, this book ties in with creativity a lot because we were born creative as your TED talk said. When we were young, we had all these dreams and goals and visions of ourselves, but we a lot of times put them on the shelf and we didn't think that they were realistic. We didn't think that they were for us. We didn't believe in ourselves. So this is um, a place to go back and kind of grab some of those things. Um, it's 29 pages. It has uh, every page is devoted to a different self-development topic. The first topic is abundance. So I think where you have to start is getting rid of a lack mentality. I don't have enough. I am not enough. There's not enough time. All of that's lack, you know? So if you start with, I live in an abundant universe, there are many opportunities for me and I can take whatever little bit of time I have and use it effectively. I think that that's where you can start and just take, even if it's five minutes, 10 minutes, three minutes, start pouring into yourself. It could be through affirmations. In this, in this guided journal, it has questions, food for thought. It has places to put songs that really lift our spirits because we have a lot of things that minister to us, but we don't always use them as effectively as we could. So are you, are you, do you have a playlist to pump yourself up? Some of us have that when we go to the gym, but we don't have that when we're feeling down. We don't have that when we're trying to encourage ourselves to reach a goal, you know? Um, a movie, movies that relate to different topics that you could watch to kind of encourage yourself, maybe learn from, because there are plenty of movies about people who overcome and you could watch that and boost yourself up. I already talked about affirmations. There's little mini vision boards in their role models. Who are you looking at to say, OK, if they did it, I can do it, too. So there's places to put pictures of role models in there um, to set goals. So those are some things just even even if you just take one step a week. The thing about change is the, the research says if you change even 10 percent, your life can be completely different. Really? So it's, it's, and if you look at the. Hold on, hold on. When when you say mm -hmm. you said if you change 10 percent, your yeah. life can be completely different. Can you explain the 10 percent? change? Okay. There is a book and I cannot think of the name of it, but it's written actually on that entire principle. And it basically says that the difference between the, the last person in the race and the first person in the race is, is like a 10% difference. They're 10% faster. They try 10% harder. You know, so basically the idea is, is we think the gap is so huge, but often it's not. Often it's just a 10% difference. So even if you change 10% of your day or 10% of your week, you could be a totally different person over time because what happens is one change leads to another change, leads to another change, leads to another change, and things tend to snowball. And if you think about even in nature, a snowball can begin as a pebble that just begins to roll and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So that picture on the front, the butterfly effect, mm -hmm. that's, that's like the whole logo for my company is the whole idea that even a butterfly on water causes ripples. Think of how tiny a butterfly is. So even if you're changing small things, it can ripple across your entire life. So um, again, let's, let's, let's go back. Um, hi, Christine. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. Um, 
let's go back to Christine. Let's let's use Christine. <laughs> Christine, I hope you don't mind. Um, let's use Christine. Christine lives in Jamaica. I'm not going to say exactly where, although we know. But <laughs> um, Christine is is a mom. I think Christine has two kids. Um, she is. Uh, 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 I don't want to say anything too personal, but Christine is at a point in her life where she would like to improve her situation. And um, right now, um, in terms of she wants to improve in terms of how she's living, where she's living, um, how she can provide for her family. Without knowing much further, much more, because I can't say any much more. Um, how would you say, what would you say that Christine could start doing to start working on that 10%? Well, um, one thing that she could do is if she has an issue, she can go to bed and ask herself a question. You know, what could I do to improve this issue 10%? Go to sleep with that question on your mind. Because what the thing about us, our subconscious works 24-7. And when we go to bed with a question in our mind, a lot of times we wake up with an answer. So that's something that I've done many times. In fact, Einstein, that was one of his keys to actually inventing is he would he would sit with a like a little bowl, like it was like kind of like a little one of those metal bowls and he would try to get really sleepy and he would put a question in his mind and then he would kind of when he would get ready to go to sleep, it would fall and it would make a sound. And he had trained his subconscious mind to think so quickly that by the time he got sleepy enough for the ball to to, to for the bowl to fall, he would actually have the a answer. new thought that he hadn't had before he took that little siesta. So he used to do this a lot and he would come up with a lot of breakthroughs by just letting his sub, he would just have this problem he couldn't think of the answer to. And he would just sit in that chair with that little metal bowl holding it and get him get really sleepy and then think about that question while he's got his eyes closed. And, I remember like years ago, many, many, many years ago, after listening to something similar to what you're saying, I took the television out of our bedroom because um, it was distracting, it was disturbing my sleep. And also there was science saying that you don't sleep well, your consciousness is too alert when you have a television thing and whatever is going on in the television is going to be played out in your, in your mind and later on yeah. in your life you know and so I, I i get that so you are saying that christine or any woman in christine's position even me you know because i'm listening to you and i have a nasty habit in the last um two years of going to bed listening to in jamaica we call it cas cas um meaning drama on social media it's just a nasty habit of mine and i've been saying to myself i need to stop it and in the last three weeks i've been doing so less and less and less i've been i've gone back to my meditative music and i wake up feeling different you know so you're right so you're saying that if christine um there is something in her life that no, I know that there's things in her life that she wants to, even Colleen, um, our dear friend, even Clara, um, we, that's where we can start. Um, yeah, affirmations are great. Meditation, visualization. Um, I mean, there's so many things you can do. It just depends on, on you. You know, me, I started with affirmations, meditation, and then I started with just small changes, like what is a dream I want to try just even a little bit and just try it. Because the thing, the thing about, there's a book called Atomic Habits. And basically it's about how oh, yeah. atomic habits. Okay. And it's about how small changes again, lead to big results and that people can just change. He was saying that sometimes people take on too much and then they get overwhelmed and they stop. Mm -hmm. But if you take on something that's doable and then you feel success at it, then you are more likely to keep going with it, you know, um, and so build on your successes and mm -hmm. give yourself credit for your successes. 
And, and the thing is, we, we worry about how far we are from our goal. And I've done this as well. But we don't understand that a little by little, it happens. Like we grow up little by little. You know, you're, you're, you're a baby and then you grow just a little bit at a time. But then mm-hmm. you end up being five foot something over, <laughs> over time. So that's how everything happens a little bit at a time. So we're, we sometimes are worried about time passing and all this stuff or how much time we've wasted and all that. But, and I did that myself too, because I didn't start on my dreams till I was 43. And I'm thinking, man, you know what I mean? I was just concentrating on being a wife and a mom. And I didn't feel very creative when I was getting divorced. I felt very insecure. I felt like I had failed. I felt I had a lot of negativity, but I just made a decision. I also think it starts with making a decision. It's like now from this moment, from this day forth, when I walk out this this divorce court, I am going to live the best life I can for me. That was the decision I made. And I'm going to live a totally different life. And I'm going to question everything that people told me. And my dreams that everybody said were impractical, I'm going to pull them off the shelf and look at them again and see what I think I could still do. And from that time to this time, I mean, in the very beginning, very little happened. It was just a mind shift. You know, I started dating. I started journaling again. I started writing poetry. And then all of a sudden I was like, let me go to an open mic. Just that one thing. Then that became a habit. I began to love that creativity, right? I got inspired by seeing other people up on stage. I heard what they were saying. It inspired me more. I felt like I wanted to get better, like they were better. And that's Mm -hmm. another thing too. Are you surrounding yourself with people that inspire you? Are you listening to, if you want to be a chef, are you watching cooking shows? Are you trying out new recipes? Just little things. So me just going to open mics, you know, I got divorced in 2014. All right. I spent a year going to open mics, not thinking it was going to do anything, but just be fun. It was, it was just an outlet. It was just creativity. And then at one of those open mics, and this is another thing, the book, The Alchemist is one of my favorite books. I love that book. When you make a decision, the whole universe conspires to help you. Help you. So I'm going to these open mics for a year, not even thinking anything about it, right? Just going and enjoying myself. And then one of the business owners of one of the hookah lounges, I've been there the the first time I'm there, never been there before, walks up to me and said, I love your poetry. Can you create a show for me? I don't like this open mic thing. I'm going to keep it, but I want a show with a flyer. I want to know who's coming because we only have four people show up tonight. I want more than four people. Mm -hmm. Now, for that whole year, I'm just taking names of poets. I, I mean, my mom taught me how to network. So I'm just gathering names and phone numbers, people's business cards. I've got, by the time he walked up to me, I had probably 50 names in my in my phone. Wow. And you had no re- reason. I had no to reason to have them there. But as soon as <laughs> I, I, I called 11 of them and 10 of them said, yeah, we'll come. We'll come. You want to you wanna do, a, you wanna do a, your first show? We'll come. And I didn't have to pay them anything. They just came because it was a new place for them to show up. They wanted to be in, you know, introduced to a new audience. And that was a business that I started. But I didn't know that whole year that I was getting ready to start a business. I was just doing what was in front of me. I went today. I'm, I'm going to hand over to Clara because I'm sure she has questions. I see her scribbling. But just because of what she said, I went today to get my hair done. and. Um, the lady, uh, she 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 put on a television and she said, first of all, she only watches YouTube. So she put it on, went to YouTube, and she has YouTube premium, so there's no ads or anything. And she start she put on to play all of these videos about Vancouver. And she said to me, Don't think I'm crazy, but I want to go to Vancouver. I want to live in Vancouver. I've never been there, but I want to live there. So every day that's what she saturates her and she's going to vancouver in a few weeks <laughs> clara over to you yes um i i am i find the conversation very very mm-hmm. interesting and what um 
what stood out for me then is when you indicate that um there's a process of taking your dreams off the shelf and um my question my question is what how do you move on from okay so you have decided to take the dreams off the shelf and revisit what do you do when the parameters in meeting those goals may have shifted over time how do you regroup because now you're in a new place a new phase and you said okay i couldn't pursue that or i had the dream of becoming that i couldn't pursue because i had this to do that to do perhaps children to raise husband to take care of now you're in a new place and you want to revisit how do you if the parameters have shifted if the criteria no longer holds are well aligned how do you move on with still trying to achieve those those goals well i think that you have to do the first thing that you see that's feasible you know i i believe a lot in take the first step and then you know a journey of a thousand miles begins with the, uh, the first step that's a like a chinese proverb yeah sure. so for me one of my dreams was to write three books okay that was a that was a dream that people told me was not feasible i wasn't going to make any money people don't make any money from writing da, 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 da. i didn't start with writing the book i just started with writing poetry i just started with getting used to my voice again getting used to sharing my thoughts again getting used to going up in front of an audience and having them be receptive i wasn't ready at that moment to send out my work into the world for an editor to look at or for a mm -hmm. magazine to look at or for them to you know to send me a bunch of you know mm -hmm. rejections i wasn't ready for that yet so i think that you have to take the first step that you can take and I think you kind of have to build up your muscles. You don't you don't run a marathon until you train for it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, you first mm -hmm. start walking around the block and then you start mm -hmm. walking around the track and you do a mile and then you do two and then three. And then, so I think you have to work up to it and you have to try. If you're looking at a really big goal, kind of what are the first two or three steps that you feel you can take? because you can't you can't do everything at once you can only take a few steps at a time so that's what i would say do the parameters are always changing and and you know there are a lot of people okay that would have said it would have been easier for me to write and get published and make money you know 20 years ago 30 years ago because the internet wasn't a big deal back then right there weren't as many distractions there weren't the social media wasn't a big deal so there are a lot of people even though they were telling me all my relatives were telling me it was impractical there are a lot of people if i had opened my mouth and told them what i would want to do they would have said oh man nobody's buying books now you know what i mean nobody's reading now that's that's you know you have to have a big name you have to have a big publishing company you have to so i would say another thing is don't tell people don't mm -hmm. tell people just take the first few steps don't tell anybody because they're gonna try to talk you out of it you finally got to the point where you want to take your dreams off the shelf why is that so why is that so um zen in your oh, when, when you have achieved your personal it, experience you speak why, about it. why people want to talk you out of your dreams i don't i i think that maybe it's like they say it's the crabs in the bucket mentality why should you get to go for your dream if i had to give up mine mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how are you better than me so i think you know there's a saying I've, I've seen it on a couple of memes move in silence yeah don't say anything until it, until it's until you pop it out with it like you know until the book is already almost on amazon like i don't talk about my books until i'm doing the book launch and everything mm -hmm. is really done and all i'm waiting for is my editor say is ready to be you know <laughs> popped up on amazon so i don't go around telling a lot of people until we're in the book launch phase of it right because i already know i already know that i'm going to get all this negativity at least that's been my experience in the past now that mm -hmm. i have some success it's different 
oh, people are like, people are now, it's like when you get some success, then everybody want to be a cheerleader. But when you need it, it's like, no. So it's, it's really strange to me. But I, w- I would say don't worry about the parameters so much. Worry about, and I won't even use the word worry, focus on the few steps you can take right now. Because what I have seen happen, and it's the same thing that I'm telling you, and this is my experience. This is what was in the book, The Alchemist. I'm going and I'm doing these open mics because I'm just trying to get my confidence. I literally was just working on my confidence. That's all I was doing. Working on my confidence, working on my skills, getting back, being comfortable with writing, getting into a routine. That's all. Those were my priorities. Not getting published. That was not on my agenda yet. And then somebody took me in a totally different direction. I'm thinking about writing three books. And the the universe said, "Uh uh-uh, here's a show. Do the show. (laughs) So for me, my journey to the three books, to five books, actually, so I actually did more than my goal, was very circuitous. It went in a totally different direction. I would have never taken this path had it been my planning. Okay, but what happened was the show led to more contacts. The contacts led to more followers, led to more money, gave me the money that I was going to need to eventually get the editor. The editor came through the show. Okay, you saw, see what I'm saying? So everything is being lined up for me, but I don't know. You know what I mean? I don't know that not, any of this is going to happen. So it's all about trusting the process, mm-hmm. following your intuition, and letting things fall in line because the show even though it seemed like it was taking me far away from where i was going it was taking me right there you know what i'm saying so so what clara did you have a follow-up question no no i'm good um what role if any does religion and or spirituality play faith in 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 being able to follow the process to pursue your create your creative side well i think faith can be or religion can be a double-edged sword um what i mean by that is depending on what religion, what faith you're in and what it tells you, it sometimes can be um, an obstacle, but it also can be a blessing. So for me, part of my journey to becoming the woman that I needed to be was moving away from traditional Christianity because traditional Christianity from the way I was raised in it was about women being subservient and women being help helpers for men and men being the you know superior you know and and basically it didn't give me the now there is a a lot of wonderful scriptures that you could say are about faith and help and hope and all that stuff but there's also a lot about putting up with stuff you know, and suffering and, you know, (laughs) things like that. So for me, I had to move away from that. My faith actually got a lot stronger when I moved away from traditional Christianity because I was able to just trust in, as some people say, the universe or source or God or whatever you want to call it. I was able to trust in the process. And it wasn't so much about, is this God's will? I don't know if I, you know, to me, there was a lot of doubt and a lot of insecurity in the faith that I was raised in. It was a lot of, maybe I should be fighting my flesh. Maybe I should be crucifying my flesh. Is this me? Is this my will? You know, so I didn't need all of those kinds of doubts. I just didn't need all of that. To me, that was a burden. I really just, I really just began to believe that, look, I was put here with the gift. I'm supposed to use this gift and I'm not going to complicate it with all this dogma that people have tried to to feed me. I'm just not going to do that. If, if I didn't have this gift, you know, I wouldn't have to worry about this, but it was given to me by God. So 
I'm going to stop worrying about all of the stuff that people have told me all my life about pride. Because when you talk about promoting yourself, I mean, you'll have a lot of religious people tell you, you're being prideful. Pride comes before fall. They'll, you know, so that's another thing about you got to be careful who you talk to because some people use the Bible as a weapon. It's, it's not as an encouragement. It's a weapon. You know, so I have had to be very circumspect with who I allowed to be close to me in the process of unleashing my creativity and, and kind of fulfilling my purpose. Um, you know, so I think it has a very important role, but I think that you have to be very careful and you have to be very grounded in your own faith, which may not be the faith that you were raised with in a sense. Mm-hmm. Cara? No, I was just making the point that I did realize I was muted, that you would, um, the faith, the faith based aspect of it, you would regard it as a complement to whatever else that you are pursuing, or whatever else you believe in, mm-hmm. and not the be all and end all, because mm-hmm. it can be confusing. True. And I like what she said about um, by letting go of the dogma, the religion, she felt deeper. She got deeper into her walk with, with so I say source, with source, with God. You know, she felt by just following the process, she, you found yourself in a deeper relationship. Because I find myself there too, you know. Pe- people have often wondered, is she Christian? And I said, no, I'm not a Christian. But I will quote the Bible because I know it. I will right. quote the Bible. I will, I will, I will pray. A, a lady took me, I think I've mentioned this before. A lady took me on here on Facebook because I posted something that said the Lord. And I'm like, I am not hung up on the words. I am hung up on the feeling that that comes from me by by that. So I really appreciated what you said about by letting go of the dogma, you found you found the truth, you know. Um, right. Yeah. Um, so for a woman who, who, who feels that she has a gift, whether that is writing, whether that's singing, whether that's even cooking, you know, because sometimes people think, let, let's just define what we mean by creativity first, because sometimes people think even with, for us, when we say, um, unleashing your creativity, they think it's only art or only writing or only the, what in your share with our audience what your understanding of what creativity means okay well um to me creativity comes from inspiration and inspiration if you break the word down speedos means god and breath you know so respiration we're breathing so whatever breathes life into you and whatever breathes life into your situations and into other people is your creativity. That could be, like you said, your cooking. It could be singing. It could be dance. It could be writing. It could be the way you put, you know, people use wood and other things and they breathe life into that. And when people see their creation, it breathes life into them. So to me, creativity goes back to inspiration, inspiros, breathing life into yourself and other people and into things. So whatever is breathing life into you, you know, is is creative. So that opens it up to a lot of things. Um, Neil deGrasse Tyson, right? He is the ultimate scientist. And that man's Mm -hmm. eyes light up when he talks about the universe and science. He's Mm -hmm. creative in his explanations of science, which most people would say science isn't creative at all. It's facts and figures and, and, you know, laws and all that stuff. But the way that he breathes life into it and it from his breathing life into it, he's able to show us the universe in a way that we might not have seen it before. So, it, yeah, yeah, like she's saying, it's any gift you have. You have the ability to breathe life into something. Some people are very creative in the way they treat children. You know, they yeah. they, they take care of kids. So creativity so, is that which that lights you up. That's yeah, it lights that. you up. You you feel inspired and you inspire others through it. To me, that's what creativity is. 
Um, just just a pause, uh, Gloria. Um, I want to test something. Um, can you can you give us a call via WhatsApp? And um, I want to see if I can put it on air. I've been I've been wanting to play around with that for a little while now. Um, can you give us a call? Give me a call on WhatsApp, and I see if um, we can hear you. We Sorry about that. <laughs> Since she's she's not here. So 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 thanks for that. So whatever it is that inspires you. So it might it, it might be your cooking, it might be it might be um anything, your sewing, your anything. Um so you you how do you recognize something as that which is 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 your your spark? How how do you recognize it? Let's start there. And can I can I just ask a question yes. before you answer um, Claudia's question because perhaps it will um, dovetail it. Do you think that we are all creative? Yes, I. I believe we're all creative. Hold on I believe a second. that we all have a gift. I believe that that's why we were each born to share that gift. Okay. And I believe that you said, how do you find it? I believe whatever comes easily to you, which others struggle with, is your gift. Like writing comes easily to me and others, you know, you would be like, oh my God, the worst thing, the last thing I would ever want to do is write. The last thing I would ever want to do is get in front of somebody and talk or share a piece of poetry. I couldn't write a piece of poetry to save my life. That's what a lot of people tell me. But for me... You know, they are shocked when they say, how long did it take you to write that piece? And I say five minutes. Now, sometimes it takes me a lot longer than that, but I'm just saying, yeah, they can't even wrap their head around that. Or there have been times when like I've been on the phone with somebody. They said something. I said, oh, I, I got to call you back. And then I'll write a poem, call them back. And they're like, oh, read the poem. <laughs> and, and they're like, what happened? I was like oh, you said something, I had to write a piece of poetry and now I'm back. And they're like, you wrote a piece of poetry? That I was like, yeah. So whatever <laughs> comes easily to you that others struggle with, to me, is your gift. Is your One second. Gift. I just want to see if um, Gloria? 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 Yes. Um, can you guys hear her? Yes, I can hear her. You can hear? Ka Clara, can you hear her? Yes, I can hear her. Gloria, I mean. Yes, I can. Gloria, keep talking. Ask a question. <laughs> Should have any. <laughs> Gloria, go ahead. Ask a question. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Go ahead again, Gloria. Did you hear her? No, I didn't hear her. Go again, Gloria. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Go again, Gloria. What, is, what does empowerment mean to you? What does a poem mean to me? Is what does empowerment mean yes. to oh, you? Oh, empowerment. Um, to me, empowerment means that whatever has been holding you back, you're getting it off of you. You are literally, I, I say for my podcast that I want to replace limitations with possibilities. So to me, empowerment is when you replace limitations with possibilities. So whatever gets you to that point where you're not feeling confined and limited, but you're feeling like you have possibilities, you have choices. Okay. So you guys are hearing her okay. I've, I've been wanting to play with this for some time. <laughs> yeah, I heard her. I heard that question. You heard it. Okay. All right. Thanks, Gloria. So, so we figured out, well, we explained what is creativity. So this lady is in her kitchen and um, she, 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 let's, I'm going to stick with Christine. I hope she doesn't mind. Um, Christine is at home cooking and her, she, she has a young child and her child particularly loved this thing that she makes. And she's really good at making these kinds of things. Or our friend Claudette. Claudette is fabulous with baking and catering and stuff like that. And she does it for free. Um, how would a, a woman like that change it from, not change, but expand it from just being a hobby and make it become 
her life as you have done? I think everyone has to decide on their journey. Um, if you're doing something for free and people are enjoying it, you could start with asking them, hey, I'm thinking about you know, doing this as a side hustle. How much would you pay me for this? You know, ask one person and see what they say. See if they say, oh, I would pay you $25. I'd pay you $20. I'd pay you whatever. Um, you know, because a lot of times people, when they know, you know, it, and especially if you could say, hey, I'm trying to get, I don't know, some summer school money from my kid or whatever, you know what I'm saying? They would, they would, they, they're a lot more willing. So you could start there. You could start with a, a test market, like maybe, um, you know, you have a neighborhood meeting or something and you bring some little whatevers and you say, hey, you know, today this is such and such amount. You know what I mean? Because a lot of people start like that. A lot of people start with five dollars, you know, charging five dollars, charging $10. Look at Jeff, look at what's his name? Basil. Didn't he start Amazon in a garage? Yeah, a lot of people start where they are, you know, they start where they are. And and so I would just start, I would just take a chance on yourself and start with where you are. Um and then if if people really enjoy it and they, you know, come back, then you can begin to try to plan how you want to do more of that. Um, for me, I didn't consider myself a business person. <laughs> so I knew I had a business, but um, I didn't really want to do the business side of it. So the business side of it has been, uh, a journey for me getting all the ducks in a row and I'm still doing that. But um, I think everybody can, some people just take to it better than others and other people, you know, it's more difficult. So I, I think you just start where you are and start and, where you are. Okay. Yeah. And then, and, and you also have to keep it in a perspective like, okay, how much money am I spending on this hobby, this thing that I do? And what would make it worthwhile for me to even consider it as a side hustle or a business or whatever, you know what I mean? Um, and have, even if you have a small goal to start with, like if I made a hundred dollars a month, that would be really amazing for me, mm -hmm. you know, or whatever, you know, you start there and then when you meet that goal, make a bigger goal, you know, and do something, do something expanded, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. Clara, you have any follow up? No, oh, no, I'm just making my notes. <laughs> I, guess, I thought you had something. To add. <laughs> I, I, I can't do that. So, so start where you are. Um, yes. So, um, the, the, I just the, wrote that down. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I, I will also say this: I don't know anything about where you live, but in, in Canada, America, far as in, in 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 Jamaica. So in America. If you're running a home-based business, you can write off a percentage. Yeah, same thing here. So for me, even when I wasn't making much money in the beginning, the tax savings ended up being about $5,000 a year. Just the tax savings on being able to write off a part of my water, a part of my lights, a part of my mortgage, a part of other things that I, you know what I'm saying? Just that by itself. Mm -hmm. um in a sense was money i got back at you know when i filed my taxes so there's different ways you can do it um you now you have to keep receipts and you have to, you know what i'm saying you have to have certain things in place but um there's there's even if you're not making a lot of money there's tax benefits at least in the united states to having a home base we, we have the same thing in canada um i don't know if it's if that's true in jamaica or elsewhere where our audience are um, Cara, can you home based business in Jamaica? Can you write it off a part of it? Clara? Yeah, I'm not familiar with that. I, okay. I'm not familiar with that. Okay, okay. Um, so, so you know, I, I love this conversation because we have touched on the, the what for some people might seem as um, 
some esoteric question, you know, of creativity, you know, and it's all up in the air. And as I think it was Gloria who said earlier on that um, people always associate the word creativity with arts, you know, but creativity can be cooking some good cornmeal dumpling. You know, it, it, creativity can be anything. Um, as, as you said, um, Zen, your, the creativity is the thing that inspires you, that makes it. I get up at three o'clock every morning and it's not because there are nails in my bed, but because I just can't wait to come to the computer and put stuff together. You know, um, I just love doing that. You know, like when, when you said this morning, when you said earlier about writing, I love to write, you know, and people have always asked me, when are you going to write books? You know, but I haven't, that's not the kind of writing that I'm into, you know. Um, and as you also said earlier, Zen, about things coming around, you know, I started out doing speech writing for politicians and you now I'm doing this, you know, I just love doing it. So your creativity comes in various forms and um, it's for you to identify it. And as we said, you identify it by what lights you up, that what, what inspires you. So having felt that light, felt that spark, is then to go to the next step to see how can I make this into something more than just something that's in my heart, you know? And what I got from you is that it doesn't have to be about making money. At least it shouldn't be about making money to start. It's about how do I express myself? Like you said, you used to just go to the club just to, to listen and to learn and to see what's happening and to meet people. And then it became, a then the universe opens itself up. Um, that's the process, correct? Then we get on to the networking, just by going right. to the club and meeting people. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I believe, you know, um, I can't remember who said it. Somebody said, if you look at a tree, there's as much underneath the tree as there is above the tree. I heard yeah. that just so, two just days last ago. week. Two yeah. days. I, yeah. I read it somewhere. I read it somewhere just last week. <laughs> yeah, two days ago. It was a TikTok video, and I can't remember. Oh yeah. Because I've been TikTok. reading the same post. We might have. Okay, so we've been reading the same post. I just read that, and I found it so interesting because never thought of it. <laughs> yes. Just so, last week. So basically, he was saying that when you're just seeing the little green shoots, come up yes there's so much underneath and basically yes. the tree is going like this so everything that I was doing in the very beginning when I was just networking I was learning I was building my confidence I was getting to know my voice I was getting comfortable with writing again I was trying out different writing styles I was pulling from my past and I was alchemizing it basically turning the pain of my divorce and the pain of different things that happened into art all of that I'm doing, that's the roots that were going down. And then the show came up. <laughs> and yeah. then the show led to meeting an editor, you know what I mean? And having her edit my books later, but that was years later. So, but all of that stuff I was doing, it wasn't for nothing. I was actually becoming the person. And that's a whole nother thing. You, okay, the person I am now is not the person I was when I walked out of that courthouse and got divorced. That's a totally different person. Just like if you're looking at a tree, that sapling is very different from that full grown oak. They don't even look anything alike. We know that they're both oaks, but the maturity, the development, the fullness, all of those things are very different. So what people don't understand, I think, they're expecting to take this me that I am today and do all this stuff that I want to do with my goals. But this is not the you that's going to do that stuff. You're going to become a new you as you grow, just like that tree is going to become. So now when that oak tree is a huge oak tree, you can put a swing on that oak tree and it can hold it up. But you can't put a swing on a sapling. It's not even big enough. Yeah. You know, you could build a tree house in that big oak tree and you could actually stand in that tree house with a couple of people in there and it can support it. 
So that tree can support the dreams that we're talking about, mm-hmm. but the sapling cannot. So if you're looking at yourself and you're a sapling right now, you got to give yourself time to develop into the person that can actually do those things. And you develop along the way. You develop when you take those risks. You develop when you get up when you don't feel like it and you keep going for your dreams. You develop when you open your mouth and you were scared to open your mouth, but you talk to somebody. You network. You take a class. You know what I'm saying? You submit a proposal. All of that stuff is part of that becoming the tree. And then eventually the stuff that used to scare the mess out you, like, okay, now... I'm not worried about sending out queries. Okay. It doesn't bother me. But but 2014 me was like, oh, no, I don't want to get rejected. No, (laughs) but this is 2024 me. So now if you say no, I'll just go to somebody else. Yeah. It doesn't, I'm not even worried. This is the farthest thing from my mind to be worried about if I send out a piece and it gets rejected. I'm not worried about it. Not at all. So that's another thing that people have to realize. You become different. And what used to be traumatically scary now is not even, you know, it's it's not even. You become, the last word in our topic tonight, you become empowered. You become empowered. Yes, you do. You become empowered. And so it's a journey to empowerment. Empowerment doesn't happen overnight, you know. And, and it, you become, you grow, you develop, you mature, you get roots, you're rooted and grounded in who you are. I know myself more and I have more confidence in myself than I've ever had in my entire life. But it's because of this 10 year journey from, you know, 2014 to 2024 that I can be on this podcast. I used to be the person that never even got in front of the camera when I first was doing shows. I didn't even want you to take pictures of me. Like, I would have been, no, no. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, I mean, so everything changes and you become a different person. And so that's what I want people to understand. It, it starts small, but like the snowball, right? It starts small and it builds. And as it builds, you're getting stronger and stronger and stronger mentally, emotionally, you know, you're getting stronger and you're able to handle more. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, this, 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 I love this conversation, you know, because we took it from, like I said, up in the sky to very practical, practical steps, you know, and, and just for the person who is looking at you now or looking at me or looking at anybody else and feel that, oh, she's got it all together, you know, um, it's, that's not necessarily true. You just got the willingness to get up each day and write that word that you need to write for the, the poem, you know, you just need to get up each day and bake that cake or that pudding or paint that picture. Um, it's a willingness to 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 live your dream. It's a willingness to to to, to put in the work, to put in the hours, and um, not looking at somebody else's where they're at. There's this other meme or this other saying, you know, you're look they're looking at. Um, the final chapter, not this chapter, but not realizing all the other chapters that went preceded where you are today, the, all the other pages that preceded the chapter that they're they're reading right now. Right. Zen, I don't know where Clara went. Um, any final words? I would I would just encourage people to realize that it's never too late. And you can start where you are with baby steps and even 10% difference can change your entire life. Even just taking one step can lead to other things. Yeah, I love that. And so just a reminder, folks, that you can find um, Zen's books on Amazon. Let me bring them back up. So basically, we've been talking about um, Zenergizing your life. And that's available on Amazon. Uh, let's go to our other books. Um, well, the ones that are available on Amazon, plenty of guppies. So don't don't beat up yourself. They have, however, many relations. What do they call it nowadays? Then the body count. Don't beat up yourself about <laughs> the body count. count. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you might get a book out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Andy. You might get a book out of it. Um, 
as well as um, uh, her children's book that's called You Are Wanted and Loved Because You Are You. And so all of Zen's book, just go to Amazon and, and type in, uh, how do I pronounce that? And I, I know it's Zen Ashe. Ashe? Ashe. Mm -hmm. Ashe. Okay. So just go on Amazon and type in Zen Ashe, and you will see all of her books that are available and get yourself your copy. Zen, thank you so much for being here. There was a couple of final questions comments that I just want to bring up here. Let me stop sharing this. And um, uh, Colleen says, I'm taking my small steps. I write my poetry when asked or when a thought jumps into my head. Oh, yes. Colleen writes poetry. And she also presents um, here at the Daughters of Shiva Foundation. She does our Sunday spirit and stuff like that. And sometimes she will include a poem or two in her in her presentations and they're quite good and uh christine is saying thanks so much for this motivational talk it's really encouraging christine i really hope that you heard something that tonight you will put what did you say zen she should put it in her maybe write it on a piece of paper put it by your bedside um and hear what the answer is tomorrow morning about how you can start working on your 10 percent uh, Christine, I think it's I, I think it's something that's lacking in our educational system. At least I, I'm, I'm talking about in Jamaica for sure, and in some parts here in Canada where we don't teach people these things. We, we 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 don't teach people that you can change your life by changing your thoughts. We mm -hmm. we don't teach people these things in school. You know, I remember I was in my 30s before I started here getting that message and hearing that concept, you know, and um, now my younger granddaughter, um, she just, a few days ago, she said to me, um, she, she was telling me that she's afraid of bugs or something. And then, then she says, but I have to face my fingers, grandma. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my God, mm -hmm. at least one school is getting it right. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to teach this kind of thing more. And that is why here at the Delta Sashiva Foundation, we are so focused, not on the drama, but on these kind of messages, having people like you on Zen, you know, um, we don't have hundreds of thousands of, of viewers, but we, we are growing. Uh, the last time you were here, I, I don't know if I told you this, then the last time you were here, we had just on the 4K followers. As of this moment, we're just on the 18K followers. And yeah, um, that's awesome. <laughs> and I don't know how it's happening. It's I'm just leaving it to, to God, you know, <laughs> and just going with the process. Thank you so much, my dear. Please, folks, go to Amazon, look up Zen, Z-E-N, Ase, A-S-E. I'm sure I just massacred your last name. <laughs> it's not okay, but, th but thank you. <laughs> And Colleen is telling you thanks. Thanks again, everybody, for being here. Make sure to join us um, on, well, join me on Saturday for another inspirational conversation. This time we'll be having a dear lady by the name of Erin. She's also an author. And Erin will be joining me for Long Bench Chat on Saturday afternoon at, well, for me it's afternoon, for guys in, you guys on the East, East Coast, which will be 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 p.m. in Jamaica. I'll be having a chat with Erin again on the whole question of overcoming, overcoming things in life that we as women um, go through and how you can turn that around and make magic. Thank you, Zen, again. Thank you for, for, for joining me. Thank you for, for thank always you. saying yes. And you know I'm going to be, maybe i ask you one day to do a Sunday Spirit for us and mm -hmm. include your poems in that. That would be nice because should have asked you to read, read a couple of poems for us tonight. But, you know, there's always another time, another opportunity to do that. Thank you so much thank for being you. Thank you for having me. And, <laughs> Uh, saying, I don't know where Clara disappeared to, so I am going to kick her out of my studio and, <laughs> and close this up. Thanks, everybody. See you on um, on Saturday afternoon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.